Welcome everyone to the next episode of Provo City School District's What's Up With The Soup podcast. I am Superintendent Wendy Dow. In recognition of Hispanic Heritage Month, I am speaking with three guests from Dixon Middle School. Lucy Ordaz Sanchez is a facts and food sciences teacher at Dixon Middle. She is also the advisor for the Latinos in Action program at Dixon. I will also be joined by two students at Dixon who are part of the Latinos in Action program, and we will be discussing LIA as well as Hispanic Heritage Month and how these guests strive to share and promote their heritage. But before we bring in the guests, here are some updates for this upcoming week. Please continue to check your school's website, calendar, and social media for important information and dates. The next school board meeting will be a study session and a business meeting on Tuesday, October 10th. The study session will begin at 4.30 p.m. and it is held in boardroom one at the district office. Our business meeting will start at 7 o'clock p.m. and will be held in the Professional Development Center, also at the district office. Both meetings are open to the public and the business meeting is open for public input. The end of the first term is coming up on October 18th. Fall break is coming up in a couple of weeks. Fall break for students will be from October 19th through October 24th. Teachers will return to work for a professional development day on Tuesday, October 24th, and students will return to class on Wednesday, October 25th. We hope you enjoy this wonderful break. Look for the weekly video cast from me every Friday. In this short video, I provide important information and updates about work happenings throughout the district. And now for some shout outs. First and foremost, we want to acknowledge our tech department for Cybersecurity Awareness Month. We also want to give a shout out to our facilities department for Energy Awareness Month and for doing a great job with our Custodian Recognition Day last Monday. It is also October, which is Principal's Appreciation Month. More to come on that as the month progresses. So welcome, everyone, to this week's podcast. We are featuring some students from our Latinos in Action program at Dixon Middle School and our LIA advisor from Dixon Middle School. So I'm going to introduce them, and they're going to help me with the correct pronunciations of their names, because this becomes a very important part of people's identities, and sometimes we just gloss over it and act like it's not important to pronounce people's names correctly, and it is really important. So I'm going to try, and they're going to correct me, and we're going to get this right. So we have Lucy Ortaz Sanchez, Mm -hmm. and she is our teacher. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been at Dixon Middle School um, what subjects do you teach? Give us all the good details about about your job here. Okay, so I have been here at Dixon for 14 years. This wow. is my 14th year. Um, I teach Latinos in Action. I teach Foods, and I teach CCA, College and Career Awareness. It was my dream to work at Dixon. Yes. Even before I graduated, I would see, like, my brother lived really close by. And so I would see kids walk by, and I would dream of teaching at Dixon. So here I am. 14 years later. For 14 years. Oh, this is yes. incredible. I love that. And then we also have uh, Maximo, where you're going to have to help me with this part, Aguilera. <laughs> Aguilera. Aguilera. Yeah. <laughs> Aguilera Her- 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 Herrera. 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 Mm-hmm. Did I get that kind of right? Mm-hmm. Okay, Maximo. All right, so translate for us. Maximo, tell us what grade you're in. Tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what you love about Dixon Middle School. ¿En qué grado estás? ¿Qué te gusta de Dixon? ¿Y qué cuentas un poquito de ti? Ok, yo estoy en octavo grado y la verdad es que este es mi segundo año en Dixon. Uh, yo llegué a los Estados Unidos el año pasado, en noviembre. En Oh, I was going to repeat it in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so this is his second year in um, Dix- at Dixon. He came to the U.S. last year. Perfect. And what grade are you in? Yo estoy en octavo. Eighth grade. Eighth grade. Perfect. Thank you. And then we also have Alexia Calderon. 
Did yes. that correctly? Yes. Okay, Alexia, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. What grade are you in? What do you love about Dixon Middle School? All the good things. Um, I'm in eighth grade. And something I like about Dixon is, I don't know, the teachers are just like so understanding and so like, they you can tell that they actually care about your education. I love that. And it's so interesting because every time I walk into the school, there's just such an incredible feeling here. Like the teachers really do. It's like a, you're a family, yes. right? It's it's awesome. So love this. Okay. Are we ready to, to start chatting a little bit? So I'm going to talk... Um, with uh, Miss Ordaz Sanchez. Did yes. I get that kind of right? Yes. Okay, good. And the students just call me Miss Ordaz. It's too long. Okay, too but, long. So yeah. Miss Ordaz. Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, tell us a little bit about um, what Latinos in Action is, what is the purpose of the program, and how do students get involved in it? Okay, so Latinos in Action has three main pillars. Um, our goal for this program or the goal of the CEO, um, Dr. Jose Enriquez, that started it, is for them to embrace their culture and be proud of it, learn more about it, and not forget about it, um, to encourage them to get to college or higher education, however that might look, technical career or something more than just high school, and then also um, encourage service in the community. So there's a lot of service involved in and being part of the class. It's an elective, but they do have to apply to be part of the class. Um, so, so there's a level of commitment that, yes. like, I want to be part mm-hmm. of this. I want to develop this skill set. And it's a one-year commitment. So you're giving up two electives to be part of it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So you have to be very dedicated that yes. this is what you want to what, right. what you want to do. Yes. Okay. And is this program available in all of our Provo City School District schools? Is it just a secondary program? Tell us a little bit about that. So it is available Um it's a, a new pilot that they're starting in elementary school. I'm not sure we have started it, but some districts have started elementary, but middle school, um, Centennial and Dixon has it, and then both are of our high school have it. I'm not sure if Independence is uh, active, okay. but at one point they did have a small uh, group of, of students. Perfect. Why do you feel that students choose this class as something they have to apply for? They have to give up to electives, which is a lot. So why, in your experience, why are they picking this class? I think uh, some of them hear the rumors, right, or have siblings that have been part of the class. Um, But mainly, I think it's coming together with people from their culture. Um, I've had students share in writing or just in comments how they feel like family when they're in this class. And it's, and it's a very different feeling um, to, ha- to have them come. I switch from Spanish to English. I use sayings that their parents use. I, you know, like I give them the dirty look that parents and they recognize <laughs> it, right? And yes. um, we, like, I joke, like, it, it comes to me very natural and they accept it very natural because it's something that they live on a daily basis at home, right? And we just laugh about the silly things about our culture. And, um, you know, we talk about the things that we want to change from our parents, right? The way they did things or how their parents did it. Um, So it's just, it's very unified. At the end of the class or the year, the class is like a family. Like in past years, a student was injured and kids wanted to go visit in the hospital. And those that couldn't go, they made a card and we sent it off. Um, if somebody's absent, I communicate with them through Remind, like what's going on, right? Like they have a chat going on through text and they're always checking in with each other, joking with each other. Um, so even if somebody didn't know somebody in class, they will very likely end up with at least a handful of friends, if not friends with the whole class. I think I see a lot of posters tied to uh, LIA where it's like La Familia, mm-hmm. you know, so it's really a part, you really are part of a family and acknowledging that and then helping to buoy each other up, right? Right. We have an actual curriculum that we're assigned, right? But we adapt it the way we want to and in the order that we want to. Um, and some of the activities that I do, I've really enjoy making them cry. I, 
I really enjoy them reaching to their vulnerable side. And that's what I tell them at the beginning. Things that we share here remain here, right? I'm going to be sharing things about my life that I'm sharing because I trust you. Students will trust you with certain things. This is this is our family. that It stays here, right? So there's things that moments that they are feeling their emotions. And I tell them, it's okay. Whatever you're feeling, right? You want to cry, cry it out. Like we don't laugh, we don't tease, and it just, it is what it is. So you really have created this um, space where everyone can feel like I, I really can be a genuine, this is this is who I am really deep down. Like, and and I'm talking with other people who really do understand what it's like to be me. Right. You know? And mm-hmm. I, I just had this image. I think it was last year or the year before. I had a student very shy. I had taught her as a seventh grader. Harley spoke up in class. I realized she was really funny. She had this thing. She would walk in the door and bust out dancing. She always did this Russian thing. And that was her thing. She would always do it. And you would have never, I would have never thought to see that side because I, I thought she was very shy. And when I told her, you know, I think of you and I just see you dancing. And she's like, this is the only place I can truly be myself. So you're seeing that on a on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. So, so um, Alexia, tell us a little bit about why you wanted to join Latinos in Action. Like hearing it from last year, a lot of eighth graders that I had classes with, they would say, "Oh yeah, in LA we did this, and Miss Or does this," and it was just you could feel like the energy that came off from that class and it just sounded like everyone communicated with each other and it just sounded so fun and I want to learn more about how to embrace my culture instead of because there's a lot of kids that are told are told very mean things for how their culture is so yeah so this this really gives you a space to explore that yes. culture to feel safe in saying no this is this is part of me and I love it and we need to find a space where our kids where our kids know that that you don't have to discard that right so awesome okay Maximo your turn tell us a little bit about why you joined LIA bueno yo me uní porque yo quería un reto para mi persona um, I joined because I wanted a personal challenge. And so you felt like that this class with its emphasis on leadership and scholarship and service was a way in which you could challenge yourself. Yes. Give me an example of, um, Maximo, of um, something where you, you feel like the class specifically has challenged you, whether it's in it's challenged you to get outside the box, do something Maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise. Bueno, sería de que yo considero que esta clase me hizo soltar lo que no pude haber soltado antes. Yo creo que esta clase es lo que me hace venir al colegio todos los días. This class is the reason I come to school every day. Oh, that must make you feel really great as as his teacher. So that's incredible. Okay, so Lexia, you tell us why, um, why uh, tell us a little bit about a challenge or how this class has helped you to um, maybe get outside of your comfort zone or do something you wouldn't have normally done. Well, like Miss Ordaz was saying, she, she's like, I don't know, she's like more like family. Like instead of a teacher, like a lot of teachers are very different from how they would be like at home with their family or with their kids or with their husbands or wives and she's more like a parent like she's she's like like a second mom almost yes like she's very she pushes us to do our best and she we can relate to her a lot and stop don't look at me like that (laughs) (laughs) she's gonna make her cry (laughs) So for both of you, she knows that you can accomplish really incredible things and she pushes you to do that and challenges you to do that. Is that is that kind of what I'm hearing? A lot of us were raised like knowing our relatives as like they don't really like 
go as far as they can in life. And she's a very good example of what we could do in the future. And she lets us know that there's more than just, there's a lot more careers out there that she helps us find. And So that you could really find something that you love doing, but yes. it might be something different than what your, than traditionally what your family has done. And that's okay. Uh-huh. Like we're just doing something different, right? We're still very much valuing what our family has taught us and, and the influence they have, but, but we get to explore even more things. Yes. I love that. That's awesome. Okay. So um, what do you feel like, Maximo, are some of the benefits both to you and to the school maybe of being in Latinos in Action? And and when I say the school, I mean, how does the school benefit from having a group like LIA? Yo creo que me ayuda a ser una mejor persona y saber de que el servicio no es malo para la gente. So I think it helps me um, see that service is a benefit to to me and that service is is great for other people as well. Serving others is great. So it so it benefits your whole school community as well as yourself. That's great. So Alexia, what would you say? It helps like all the students find how to embrace their culture. Like not just the LA students, but the LA students Whatever they learn about their culture, they go and share it with their friends, and their friends share it with more friends. So it just really benefits the environment of school. Does there, do you feel like it helps to create a greater appreciation for the diversity, even if someone's not a Latino or Latina, that it it's just it doesn't matter what your differences are, you need to embrace that background. Do you feel like it does yes. that? That's the feeling that I feel when I walk into the building. You can just feel it here. Uh, We'll start with Maximo. Tell us about some of the activities that you do in LIA, or if you want to share some of the service opportunities that you participate in. Bueno, una de las cosas que me gusta mucho que estamos haciendo actualmente es que le vayamos a leer a los niños. Yo, a mí me encanta enseñar a la gente y yo siento que esa es una muy buena oportunidad para mí y para todos. Okay, one of the, my favorite things is that we go and read to the children. He means we go to Franklin um, every Thursday and we're reading with the first graders. And he says he loves teaching. So it's a really great experience for him. Maximo, do you want to be a teacher maybe? Mm, no, pero si es que está la oportunidad y no puedo cumplir mi sueño, probablemente sí lo haría. He would, it would be like his backup. Not, he doesn't really want to be a teacher, but it's an option. Definitely an option. You definitely know that it's something you could be doing. So that's great. What about you, Alexia? What are some of the service opportunities that you've had that you really enjoy? Well, one of the service opportunities is coming up. We were talking about it like last week. We want to go to a retirement home. And we want to have like a Thanksgiving dinner type thing with them and share what we're thankful for. Because a lot of them don't have families and it would just, seeing their joy would make us happier. And since you guys are basically a family, then you're kind of sharing your family with them, right? Yes. I think that sounds like an incredible idea because people sometimes in those living conditions are often forgotten, right? Mm -hmm. And so this would be a great opportunity for you. How would you say that uh, being involved in LIA has really impacted your life or how is it going to influence some of the choices you think you're going to make when you head to high school, Maximo? Bueno, yo creo que... Esto literalmente cambiaría mi vida. Esta clase cambia mi vida y siempre estaría agradecido con esta clase y mis verdades y todos mis compañeros. Y yo creo que me podría cambiar en forma personal y que en algún futuro capaz pueda seguir en esta clase y si no tengo la oportunidad, servir a servicios comunitarios y cosas así. So this class completely has changed my life and it will continue to impact my life. In the future, I hope to be part of the class in high school. If I don't have the chance to be part of it, then I hope to continue doing service for the community on my own. So excellent. So your plan is to be in the class, but if that doesn't happen, you're still going to utilize all of the skills and things that you've learned here at Dixon. You want to keep incorporating those. That's incredible. What about you, Alexia? 
I think it's the same. Like, it has really helped me see how special and beautiful our culture is. And I want to do more of this in high school, for sure. I love that you described your culture as beautiful. That just, that warmed my heart right there. I see too often sometimes kids really trying to distance themselves sometimes from their culture because they don't want to be different. And I feel like when we have an LIA program in a school, it really creates this atmosphere where kids recognize how important that culture, how important their families are and and the sacrifices that your families have made, right? I, I think it's incredible. So we're talking a little bit about that it's National Hispanic Heritage Month. Tell us a little bit more about what that means to you personally. So um, before we start recording, I shared that I had two last names. Um, yes. I remember when, when I first came, I, I was raised in Mexico. I was born and raised in Mexico. So I came to college and then I just uh, stayed and, and worked there. But when I first was getting adapted to the culture, everybody dropped my Sanchez. So I thought that was the right thing to do. And I would tolerate my name being butchered because I'm like, well, they don't know, right? So, so then at one point, my driver's license only had Ordas. And it's when I did my master's that I did a self-study and I really realized how important it was not to forget about my mom, my mother, because her influence in my life was that, that I couldn't just drop Sanchez. So then I even asked BYU, can you reprint my diploma? Because it's actually Orda Sanchez. And I asked the district to add Sanchez. And so my everybody noticed the difference. They're like, did you get married? I'm like... No, it's just my two last names, right? And everybody that gets confused or ends up calling me Sanchez, I explain, no, it's Ordaz Sanchez. You can just call me Ordaz, but it's there because I want to honor my mother and also my culture because that's how it works. I don't hyphenate it because it's, it's not. It's two last names. So I think as time goes by, I'm honored and humbled at the same time to carry my culture with me, my traditions, my my struggles I share with them, my struggles of growing up, the way that I grew up, right? It's it's below poverty and here I am, you know, a professional with a master's degree trying to encourage kids in similar situations that we can do it and it's because of our culture not leaving it behind. We don't have to leave it behind. It kind of boggles my mind that people don't understand that part of your culture, that of having the two names. We need to understand this. This is so important. This is a part of people's identity, and you can't erase either side of that, right? right. That's very, very important. I'm so glad you shared that. Thank you so much. What about um, for you, Maximo? Okay, mi cultura para mí es bien importante porque ella me formó y también formó a mis padres que también me formaron a mí. It, it's really important to me because my culture is what shaped me and it also shaped my parents. Y mis padres también me formaron a mí y es como una forma de honrar lo que es nuestra cultura y todas las personas, incluyendo a tus padres, a tus tíos, a tus amigos, a las últimas personas de la tierra que ellos estuvieron ahí para que tú tuvieras un lugar mejor y eso es muy destacable e importante. So my parents also shaped me and um, all the family members before them. Our families have sacrificed so much for us to have a better future. What do you what do you feel like, Alexia, as a as a response to that question too? Well, we recently had a an assignment where we had to learn about how we are where we are. Like we had to write about our family and where our family's originally from and our grandparents and I had never like talked to my parents about that until that assignment. And I was thinking about it and I was working on it. And then one of the things we had to write down was how did your parents get to where they were? Because we were originally from Arizona. Well, I am. My mom was born in Mexico and my dad in Arizona. 
and I had to call my grandma because I didn't know how much they sacrificed for us until that assignment. Like, I never really thought about it, and now that I recognized it and had to write something about it, it made me so grateful for them because without them, well, they left for a better life, not only for their kids, but for us and my siblings and my cousins, and I had never recognized that. You recognizing that sacrifice that they've made, does that make you want to really try hard like in school and be like, yes. I've got to take advantage of this opportunity? I, I'm sure that changes it, right? Mm-hmm. It, it changes your perspective a little bit. I'm so glad you shared that story. That was incredible. So it just demonstrates how important those assignments are where we're really reflecting on where we came from yes. and why we are the way that we are, Right. What is one thing you wish people knew about your culture, your heritage, the challenges that you've had that you feel like people are just kind of oblivious to? Cinco de Mayo is not our independence. Perfect. (laughs) Thank you. So tell us what Cinco de Mayo is so that we can correct all of the misconceptions. Well, maybe a few of the misconceptions. It's actually a battalion uh, in a state. Um, So it... It was important, but it's 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 really interesting to me how over the board we go on that date, and um, it's it's not a big deal for us. <laughs> Is there another holiday that you wish that we would pay more attention to that has more meaning in your culture? Our independence is in September. A lot of our countries, Latin American countries, celebrate the independence in September. So if anything, we should have taco parties in September, in September. more than in May. <laughs> and not every Mexican likes spicy food. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a stereotype. That's not okay. It's, I don't. And so I always get, aren't you from Mexico? Um, yeah, but I didn't grow up eating spicy. My mom didn't like it. My dad did. So she made salsa for him. We had different. So it's. Just as varied as it is here, Mm -hmm. it is in other countries. Right. Right. Yep. Love that. Maximo, do you have something you want to share that you wish everybody knew? Que Santiago no es lo único que tiene Chile. He's from Chile, so he's saying Santiago is not the only thing that makes Chile. Oh, good. So what what is something that you wish people knew that makes Chile great? Que no todos en Chile son garabateros. Que es garabatero. Así, mal habladores, que dicen malas palabras. Ok. Entonces, ¿cómo, cómo lo explicarías? Como no todos son... No todos son malas personas, podríamos dejar. Ok, ok. Um, so he would like um, everybody to know that um, there's a lot of good people. It's not just bad people from Chile. Yeah. There's a lot of goodness that comes from them. Lamentablemente... La gente se queda con el estereotipo de que los chilenos somos mala gente y no se enfocan en lo bueno que pueden ser en el interior. Unfortunately, people focus on the bad things about Chileans and the, the negatives, and there's, they don't focus on the good that we have to offer. I just want to thank you so much for being part of our podcast. I'm so excited to talk with you. So I appreciate your time. You guys are great. Thank you everyone for joining me for this episode of What's Up With The Soup. As always, all episodes will be posted anywhere that you get your podcasts. If you have any topics or questions you would like us to discuss, please email us at podcast at provo.edu. Next week, I will be visiting with Clay Bingham, our CTE, Career and Technical Education Director for the district. We want to highlight the many opportunities provided to our students through CTE courses, and we want to share how students can become more involved in these types of classes and programs. See you next time.